Hi everybody, this is Lori Anderson with FreedomOutpost.com and as promised, I told you uh, in my previous video that I covered the You Can't Evacuate With Your Guns Florida Sheriff's Association Continue to Oppose Bill to Allow Citizens to Take Their Guns With Them in the State of Emergency. Nanette did call me back. I am getting ready to contact her and see if she will go on record explaining her side as to why they oppose this bill. All right, Nanette has referred me to Behind the Badge. This is the blog of the Florida Sheriff's Association. And this is a response from the Florida Sheriff's Association um, by the Executive Director Steve Casey for why they are not agreeing with SB 296. So I will read this to you. This was posted April 25th, 2014. Over the last few weeks, a number of you have called and written to me asking why the Florida Sheriff's Association opposes the bill that would authorize concealed carry of a firearm without a concealed weapons permit during a declared emergency. The short answer is we oppose the bill in its current form, but we would support the bill if some common sense amendments were added to ensure public safety. Sheriffs in Florida strongly support a citizen's second amendment right to keep and bear arms. They even passed a resolution stating this in 2012. The sheriffs believe law-abiding citizens should be able to have guns in their homes, vehicles, and places of businesses. They believe citizens should be able to engage in sports and recreational activities involving firearms. They also believe that qualified citizens should be able to obtain concealed weapons permits and keep their weapons with them. In fact, many sheriffs are members of gun rights groups like the NRA and sponsor firearms training programs for area citizens and even host firearms competitions as local fundraisers. Here in the Sunshine State, the issue of gun rights is a hotly debated topic and has been for years. The special interest groups staked out their positions long ago. Each year, they seek bill sponsors to advance their agenda. In fact, this is why they survey, rate, and endorse political candidates in the local, state, and national elections. They say these groups work hard to elect candidates who will support their agenda would be a real understatement. This year, there were 59 different firearm-related bills filed. That's a lot of bills, to be sure. Thank goodness they put numbers on them so that we can keep track of them all. The sheriffs review these bills and amendments and then provide input to the sponsors. The sheriffs look at these bills from the perspective of the law enforcement officers who must understand and enforce the law and how it will impact the citizens that they are sworn to protect. The sheriffs have never hesitated to support bills that they feel will enhance public safety. However, when they determine a bill is poorly constructed, vague, or conflicts with the existing law, is unenforceable, or worse yet, actually diminishes public safety, they provide that information to the bill sponsors as well. In most cases, the bill sponsors are willing to work with the sheriffs to amend the bills so we can support them. This is what happened with several bills that were filed this year. Stand your ground, guns in public schools, threatened use of force, etc. When we support such bills, the gun rights groups remain quiet, but if we oppose a bill for any reason, the story quickly changes. That is when allegations are made that the sheriffs don't support the Second Amendment. That is when the emails go out urging gun owners to call and write their representatives to put pressures on legislators to support the bill and ignore the advice of the sheriffs. The Second Amendment of the U.S. Constitution gives a citizen the right to keep and bear arms, as does the Florida Constitution. The courts have interpreted this to mean that the states can place reasonable restrictions on these rights. That is why in some states, citizens are allowed to carry firearms openly or concealed, but in other states they are not. The Florida legislature has defined that a citizen can carry a concealed weapon under certain circumstances, and they define who can carry, when, and where. That makes Florida a concealed carry permit state. The permit is like a license, and not everyone can qualify for the permit, and thus some are denied the ability to carry a concealed firearm. 
about 5% of the population in Florida has actually obtained a CCW permit. The law in this area has evolved over time and today the sheriffs feel that we have a system that correctly balances the right of the citizens and the need for public safety. But the pressure to expand gun rights is constant in which in part helps to explain why so many bills are filed each year. When the sheriffs first read the bill that would authorize concealed carry of a firearm without a permit during the time of declared emergencies, they were not sure it was needed. As the main reason for the bill, the proponent stated the police in New Orleans had seized the guns of citizens in the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina. While we didn't know what actually happened in New Orleans, we do know this is Florida and we have been through hundreds of emergency evacuations over years. We could not find one situation where a law-abiding citizen was arrested for possession of a firearm and their weapon seized during an evacuation. In addition, we know that citizens were not expected to leave their weapons behind when evacuated, since the current Florida law allows transport of firearms by permit and non-permit holders. The only difference was the non-permit holders could not carry concealed. That's all. We wondered what problem the bill was actually trying to solve. What the sheriffs did know was that suspending our gun laws during such a critical time could create some dangerous situations. They made the sponsors aware of these concerns and hoped that they would understand the issue. The sponsors, however, did not agree with the sheriffs and refused to allow amendments to the bill that would have clarified who would be authorized to carry a concealed weapon, how long they would be authorized to carry a concealed weapon, and in the areas they would be authorized to carry a concealed weapon, etc. Without answers to such basic questions, the law would be practically unenforceable. As written, the bill would authorize people in areas experiencing an emergency to evacuate any other area of the state, and then they would then be allowed to carry concealed firearms during the entire time they remained in a non-emergency area. However, the people who actually lived in the non-emergency area would still be bound by the concealed weapons law. We thought this was an illogical result. Also, the people who refused to evacuate would be able to carry a concealed weapon while they stayed put. Likewise, people from outside the area affected by the emergency could, harm them, could arm themselves and enter the disaster area, making the environment even more unstable and volatile. In some cases, the people will increase the likelihood for accidents and injuries as they will not have the background, testing, and training required of regular permit holder. In addition, there is some question about whether this bill would authorize people to carry concealed in public shelter that is not a school. All these issues we raised for consideration. As you can see, the bill as written certainly creates more questions than it answers and sets the stage for a number of legal challenges and lawsuits and potentially law-abiding citizens being arrested for not understanding what the law allows and does not. At this point, it remains to be seen if any amendments will be made, but be assured we have submitted proposals to the sponsors that outline what we believe are reasonable time, place, and manner restrictions. We are still hopeful that our concerns will be addressed. So I ask you, what should the sheriffs do when they are presented with bills that they truly believe will be a nightmare to enforce and will likely reduce public safety? Should they remain silent or should they let their voices be heard? I answer by saying the sheriffs know the primary role of government is to protect its citizens. The sheriffs take their role as the chief law enforcement officer of the county very seriously. The sheriffs understand the political realities of these situations. They are not afraid to speak out for what they believe is right and will not be intimidated or silenced by anyone or any group. In closing, I hope I have provided you with some new insight on the issue so you understand exactly what the sheriffs are trying to do. I hope you will see through this disinformation that is being spread and realize that your sheriffs do in fact support your rights as a citizen in our great state and nation. And it's them and their deputies who are willing to lay down their life to protect you, our communities, and our way of life. I hope that you will continue to support your sheriff as he or she supports you. Thank you and until next time, stay safe.
So this is the Florida Sheriff's Association's um, response to the SB 296 and why they do not support it. Now, I can understand vagueness. However, I do have some uh, further questions, which I am going to try to be able to get a meeting with um, the executive director, Steve Casey, so that we can speak together and so that we can touch base on the real issues and, and why people really feel like they don't support the Second Amendment. Because although this, is, this blog makes you understand a little bit more as to why they oppose this bill, in reality, the Second Amendment to the United States Constitution uh, clearly states a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Now, a lot of people go and, and they say, well, you know, these Supreme Court justices have justified um, these certain actions and uh, have said that this is allowed in accordance with uh, their interpretation. So let's go over some definitions. Right. Any claim, title, etc., that is morally just or legally granted as allowable or due to a person. I know my rights. Anything that accords with the principles of legal or moral justice. The fact or state of being in accordance with reason, truth, or accepted standards, especially in the phrase in right. Now, that's your right. So we've covered the definition of right. Now let's cover the definition of bear. Bear, to hold up, support. Number two, to carry from one place to another, to transport. So bear also under the Second Amendment where it states you that your right to bear arms shall not be infringed means it shall not be infringed to be able to carry it from one place to another, to transport it, or to hold up and support it. Shall. The definition of shall, used before a verb in, an, in the infinitive to show, something that will take place or exist in the future or we shall arrive tomorrow, something such as an order, promise, requirement, or obligation, you shall leave now, as an example. He shall answer for his misdeeds. The penalty shall not exceed two years in prison. So in other words, it is an order. It is a promise and it is a requirement or an obligation. Shall not. The will to do something or have something take place. Something that is inevitable. Archaic, to be able to, to have, to, or must. Not, in no way, to no degree, used to express negation, denial, refusal, or prohibition. I will not go. You may not have any. So shall not means you are not allowed to prohibit or alter in any way the right to bear arms. You're not allowed to infringe upon those rights. And the Supreme Court justices that says, yes, you could do this, they know the definitions, but people have allowed them to get by with it. Are we to assume that any human being is perfect and would not or could not be corrupted for the or gotten to or asked 
to infringe upon our true Second Amendment rights for political gain or for monetary reasons. Absolutely, any human being can be gotten to. Infringe. Infringe. Go against as of rules and laws. Contravene, run afoul, or conflict. Breach, infract, transgress, violate, go against, offend, break, act in disregard of laws, rules, contracts, or promises. Violate the basic laws or human civilization. Break a promise, break a law. Infringe, advance beyond the usual limit, encroach, impinge, advance, march on, move on, progress, pass on, go on, move forward, also in the metaphorical sense. Violate, contravene, disobey, transgress. Infringe on or upon something. Intrude on, compromise, undermine, limit, weaken, diminish, disrupt, curb, encroach on, trespass on, it's starting to infringe on our personal liberties. So, we now know the definitions. So let's read the Second Amendment once again. A well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state. The right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. So, do they have that right to limit, to alter, to change an unalienable right? No, but they have done so for years. And I am talking about the federal government at this point, not the Florida Sheriff's Association. Could it be as simple as the Florida Sheriff's Association doesn't realize the complete depth of that? Legal. Just because something is legal does not make it lawful. Okay? Legal, of or relating to or concerned with law. Legal papers, authorized by or based on law, a legal right. Established by law, statutory, legal owner. In conformity with or permitted by law. Legal business operations, recognized or enforced by law rather than by equality. In terms of or created by the law, a legal offense. Applicable. applicable to or characteristic of attorneys or their profession, and one that is in accord with certain rules or laws. So you can have something on a sheet of paper, and it could be legal, but that doesn't necessarily make it lawful. For instance, you have laws, or let's say there was a law that allowed for you to be picked up for no reason by police officers, thrown in jail, no charges and no trial and no redress of grievances and not being able to see a judge or not have yourself being told why you're even there and they can hold you in that prison cell for no reason whatsoever or no justifiable reason whatsoever and hold you indefinitely. That would be unlawful. That goes against everything our Constitution, the United States Constitution, as well as all of the state constitutions, yet it is legal because the federal government decided to allow that language to stay in the NDAA. So, just because something is legal does not make it lawful. Lawful. Adjective legal, constitutional. 
Notice that. Constitutional. Just, proper, valid, warranted, legitimate, authorized, rightful, permissible, legalized, allowable, licit, lawful for the doctors to treat her in whatever way they considered best. Banned, illegal, forbidden, prohibited, unlawful, illicit, illegitimate, and unauthorized is the opposite. <clears throat> lawful, conformable to or allowed by law. Lawful means methods of dissent. Legal is established by or founded upon law or official or accepted rules. Square straight, characterized by honesty and fairness. What is unlawful? Unlawful is contrary to or prohibited by the defiant of the law. Now, isn't honestly gun laws contrary to or prohibited by or defiant of the United States Constitution? Absolutely it is. So those are unlawful laws, but they are legal. I hope I'm making sense. Lawful according to custom or rule or natural law. Rule governed regular in accordance with fixed order or procedure or principle. Lawful. Having a legally established claim lawful. Having a legally established claim. A legitimate heir as an example. The true and lawful king as an example. Rightful. True. Legitimate of marriages and offspring recognized as lawful. So just because something is legal doesn't make it lawful. And just because Supreme Court judges say it is so doesn't necessarily make it so. We have the Florida Statute Section 27 of their Constitution. Section 2, basic rights. All natural persons, female and male alike, are equal before law and have inalienable rights, among which are the right to enjoy and defend the life and liberty to pursue happiness, to be rewarded for industry, and to acquire, possess, and protect property except that the ownership, inheritance, disposition, and position of real property by aliens ineligible for citizenship may be regulated or prohibited by law. No person shall be deprived of any right because of race, religion, natural origin, or physical disability. So every person, even in the Florida State Constitution, has certain basic rights. They have the right to enjoy and defend life and liberty. How are you able to defend your life and liberty if you have to have permission from the government or from the state in order to possess a firearm for your self-protection? Now, Over here, the SB 296 bill. It died on the calendar May 2nd of 2014, carrying a concealed weapon or a concealed firearm, providing an exemption from criminal penalties for carrying a concealed weapon or a concealed firearm while in the act of complying with a mandatory evacuation order during a declared state of emergency. Now, I have read what the Florida Sheriff's Association stated. And my question is this for the Florida Sheriff's Association, which I will be asking them. Unless a person is in the middle of committing a crime, why would you seek to enforce someone who is carrying a concealed weapon anyway? Because it is lawful. It may not be legal, 
but it is lawful. And when there is no victim for quote unquote a crime, then why would you even pursue or want to enforce or want to know how to enforce that type of situation? For example, we have people who are mandatorily being evacuated as in Hurricane Katrina. They take their weapons, they put them in a bag. Instead of carrying them open to carry, they put them in a bag, like a duffel bag. And they're carrying them out of the situation, but yet, as of right now, if they don't have a concealed carry permit, then that would be considered concealed and they could be charged with carrying their firearms concealed. So if that person is not in the middle of a crime, a real crime, in other words, trying to shoot somebody, which is already illegal if you're trying to shoot somebody without it being self-defense, or you're trying to rob a bank, or you're doing something of that nature, that's already a crime. Thus, that would already be under penalty of law in the first place. So, I guess my question to them, or to Mr. Steve Casey, who I'm sure and hopefully will have the pleasure of meeting, and get his side of things to really understand why he feels that they have a right to uh, justify under the guise of quote unquote public safety. When in reality, he knows, as well as all other sheriffs know, it's not the law abiding citizens that you have to worry about in the first place. The law-abiding citizens that are trying to get this bill passed are the ones that follow the law. So, the criminals who don't care what's on that sheet of paper or what's on that law will still have their weapons. The Department of Justice themselves involved with Fast and Furious, had no problem going along with and covering up with weapons being given to murdering Mexican drug cartels. So if you are under the illusion that because uh, of the laws that the criminals will not get the guns or the weapons uh, then you're sadly mistaken. Because if they can't get them anywhere else, they'll make sure to try to find a fast and furious situation. All right, well, that's all I have to say for right now. I will definitely get back with you when I have uh, an interview with Steve Casey, the Executive Director for the Florida Sheriff's Association. And hopefully we can speak to each other, understand more with each other, because there are a lot of great officers that are out there. And a lot of times I think that they just don't realize the difference between the unalienable rights and seeking permission. And free men and women don't seek permission. Only slaves do. So let's hope with an open dialogue between the Florida Sheriff's Association and myself, maybe we can get together and 
opened some eyes and changed some views when we go into the definitions of what really truly can be a uniting for the freedom of all Americans. God bless you for now.